Today's video is a special collaboration with our friend Bree from Bree's Arts. We will be talking about that a little more in just a bit. For now, let's get started. Hey y'all, this is Kay. Today, Trish and I are going to be using two different Easter wreath forms from the Dollar Tree. I'm going to be using this one shaped like a bunny head. I'm going to be using some 10 inch mesh that I got at Hobby Lobby and guess what? Everything's 40% off in the Easter supplies this week. I'm going to be using some wired ribbon, two and a half inch and one and a half inch. Some of this microfiber cloth that I got at the Dollar Tree. A scrap piece of foam board, this one originally came from the Dollar Tree. Some Fabri-Tac glue and my hot glue gun. Some white chenille stems one zip tie, one of these wire baskets that I got at the Dollar Tree. I think they're trash cans. And finally, my wire cutters and my rotary cutter. The first thing I did was trace out those bunny ear shapes by laying my wreath form down on my foam board. And then I'm just going to take my Zacto knife and I'm going to cut it out. This particular utility knife is called a finger blade and it's by Fiskars and it makes short work of this project. The next thing I'm going to do is cut out some microfiber cloth for each of the ears that I'm going to be covering, but I'm going to make it larger than the actual piece. Then I'm going to take some Fabri-Tac and put it down onto my foam board. I'm going to use a popsicle stick to help me spread it out evenly. And then we're going to cover the ears. I'm just going to glue it right now to the front and let these lay flat and dry. And of course, we'll do the same thing to the second ear as well, making sure though that I'm using the front side the way I cut these out or they won't match up once we go to put them on the wreath. For this wreath, I'm going to use a total of 13 chenille stems. 12 of them I'm going to cut in half and we'll use them that way. I'm going to use my rotary cutter to cut my mesh. Our mesh is 10 inches and I'm going to be cutting 10 inch pieces. So it's really easy to remember. The rotary cutter is the way to go when you're cutting mesh. I was really impressed also with the quality of this mesh, especially for the price. You will need to cut a total of 23 pieces of 10 inch mesh. The next thing I'm going to do is take my wire cutters and I'm going to come up about two rows and I'm going to cut off the bottom of this basket. I just take my time and work my way around and keep it even. And then I'm just going to take those pieces and flatten them out so that we make a nice flat circle. Next thing I'm going to do is take that piece that we cut out of the basket and I'm going to center it in the middle of this wreath form and I'm going to take some chenille stems, the half cut ones, and I'm going to first put it onto the wreath form by anchoring it at all those crossbars. So the four crossbars, I go first one side and then diagonally across and then over to the other side. So now we have the four in. Now we're going to go in and put one in between all of the ones we just put in. So we'll have a total of eight here. And that's our first set of chenille stems on this form. For our second set of chenille stems, we're going to place them in between all of the ones that we've already made, but we're going to go on two of the outer rings. So I'm going to come in sometimes through the wire just to make sure it's anchored again. And I'm going to place it right between where I have two other chenille stems. So we will have two chenille stems on each of these sets of anchor points. And that will give us eight set of chenille stems on the outer two rings as well. So, so far we'll have 16 of our chenille stems put onto our wreath. I'm going to take my mesh and roll it into curls. And once I get it rolled, I'm going to pinch it in the center and kind of tuck in those raw ends. This particular mesh does not fray a lot, so that's wonderful. And then we'll give it several hard tugs and place it down here at the beginning of the middle here. And then I'm going to cut off that excess chenille stem as we go and tuck it down onto the piece. And now let me show you that just a little bit faster. Again, curling my 10 inch mesh twisting it down several times, then cutting off the excess chenille stem. And now we're going to start working our way around this wreath form. 
We're just going to repeat the same process until we fill in all 16 of these chenille stems, working our way around the wreath. Once those two rows are finished, then we're just going to start rolling up all of the remaining pieces of our mesh and twist a chenille stem around the center. And once that process is done, now we're going to begin placing in our pieces onto the white wire. What I'm going to do is place six around the edges. I'm just going to come in about an inch and a half and work my way around one sixth of the way, all the way around. And when I get to the last one, I'll just place it down right in the center and that will cover up all of this wire. Want to work on our ears. I'm going to pull them towards the back Pull in that excess fabric and then just tuck it down with some hot glue. The foam board keeps it nice and stiff and it also helps it all stay together and it won't fall apart. And if you don't like this unfinished edge, just add another piece of fabric on the back and it will cover it up nicely. All you have to do is cut another piece of that white fabric. And once we got that covered, we're just going to trim off the excess with our scissors. And of course, I couldn't leave it alone. I'm going to take this makeup that I got from the Dollar Tree, and it's a nice, pretty pink blush. And I'm going to use a stiff brush and paint it right down the middle of the ears. And there we have our bunny so far. I'm going to make a bow using my Easy Bow Maker, and I'm starting out with 8-inch tails and four inch loops and I'm going to do two loops on each side. Then I'll come in with my second color and I'm going to come in about three and a half inches for each of those loops and I'm only doing one each of the blue and for the final color I'll do two loops each. Again, smaller than the blue. I'm going to use a zip tie to pull everything nice and tight. I'll put a chenille stem inside that zip tie so that I can attach it to the wreath later. We'll fluff our bow, dovetail those ends, and attach it to the end of the wreath. I know that was short, but this was a really long video, y'all. And here's our bunny. Today we are partnering with our sweet friend Bree from Bree's Arts for some beautiful spring decor inspiration. We are also excited to let you know that we are going to be sharing a pack of our Hippo Water Slide decal paper with one of our sweet friends. Stick around and we'll tell you more about that later. If you haven't heard of Brie, we really hope you will go check her out. Her channel is full of gorgeous DIYs, hauls, and decorating tips. She is so sweet, funny, and incredibly talented and we just know you are going to love her as much as we do. When you finish our video, go over and check out her gorgeous spring projects. We will have a link to her video in the description box below. Make sure you tell her we sent you over. If you are new and coming over from Bree's channel, welcome. We are so happy to have you join us. We release two videos each week. We are sure you can find something you will like with Crafting Cousins. Now, Let's craft y'all. Hey y'all, it's Trish. For this project, I'm going to be using this egg wreath form that I got from the Dollar Tree out of the spring section. Some florals that I got from Hobby Lobby. They were 50% off this past week. This small grapevine wreath that I found at the thrift store. You could use any grapevine wreath. They even have some at the Dollar Tree. Some ribbon of choice. I'm going to use this rose ribbon from Hobby Lobby. They still have some over in the spring section. Some twine. I got mine from the Dollar Tree. Some chenille stems and my glue gun and some glue sticks. So this week, Kay and I both are going to be making spring wreaths out of the forms that they have at the Dollar Tree. I wanted to use this egg wreath form, and I wanted it to be rustic. 
I decided to use some twine and to weave it in and out to form my egg. I think this is going to be really pretty and fall more in line with like a farmhouse look. So I was cutting my twine off in strips and I would start off by gluing one end to the back of my frame. Then I weave it in and out between those little wires. You're going to go over one, under one, over one, under one. When you get to the end, you just wrap around and go back around again. Now, this twine is not very thick, and it did take a while to do this. It took me about two and a half hours to complete this, but that was okay. I just went to the living room, and I put on some Project Runway All-Stars, watched a couple episodes, and did some mindless work. Y'all, it's really quite cathartic once you get started with it. Now, once I got to the end of my string, I would just go ahead and cut off another piece. I would tie it into a knot, and I tried to make sure that my knot was going to be at the back of the frame, and then I would trim it off and just keep going. Now, if for some reason your knot does end up on the top, don't worry about it, because as you do this, you are pushing your string down, and it just kind of works itself into it. You won't even see it once you're finished with it. We're going to take this into the living room and finish it up. Now that we have our frame completely covered with our twine, I want to take my lighter and burn off all these little hairs that this twine has. It has a lot of them, and I think that by using your lighter and just kind of going over and letting it burn it off, it makes it much more professional looking. Now, <laughs> I had an idea for this grapevine wreath. I wanted to have like the vines wrapped around one side of my egg. I thought it was going to give it this really pretty natural look. And so I got this little grapevine at the thrift store and I started undoing it. And you can see that one piece I got off of there, it wrapped around it pretty well. So I kept taking it apart and I was thinking once I got into it where it's all wrapped together, that that would be one long piece and that it would work the best. Well, it may have been one long piece, but y'all, this stuff is so dry and so brittle. And when I was trying to take it apart, it would break. And when I tried to wrap it around my wreath, it didn't want to wrap. It was either gapping really bad or it would break when I tried to get it closer. I kept playing with it, hoping that it would get better. I used some hot glue and glued it down. Then I used some wire and wired it down. And I was finally able to get enough that I liked it, but it didn't work out the way I thought. Now, the ones from the Dollar Tree may work better because it probably is longer and that might work better. But when I was talking to Kay about it, I was telling her I had this idea and how frustrated I was. And she told me that the trick to doing this is to soak that grapevine wreath in water. If I would have soaked this overnight in water, it would have been much more pliable and it wouldn't have broke like it did. So if I do another one of these I'm definitely going to try that trick I can see where that would work so much better but for this one I just was finally able to get enough on here and I was really happy with how it turned out it was just really frustrating having to use the wire to um, wire it down with but now don't worry I did go back and clean up that back so it doesn't scratch my door now that I have my grapevine wreath on there, I'm going to take another piece of twine, I fold it in half, and then I pull it through on one of those wires and tie it in a knot, and this is going to give me a hanger. We'll just push our twine back up together, and you won't even know that it's there. Now let's decorate our wreath. I start off by using some of this ivy that I got from Hobby Lobby, and I think it is absolutely gorgeous. It is so fresh and so spring looking. I probably could have just used this and been happy with it. I cut off pieces and I would stick one end into my twine and secure it there. And then on the first one, I kind of wrapped it up around it and I used some wire to secure it at the end. And then when I started going the other way, I stuffed the end of it into my twine and then I just kind of ran it up under my vine that I had there. I did end up using two more pieces but I'm not sure that they were really necessary because once I start putting my flowers on there, it kind of covers this up. But I loved it so much that I was hoping that it would peek through and you know, it is what it is. You use what you like to make yours work the way you want it to. 
once I got my vine on there, I started cutting some clusters of my roses. I started off with this cluster of three pink roses. I love these little miniature roses from Hobby Lobby. And I wired it going up my wreath. And then I took a little cluster of the white ones and I wired it going around the bottom. Now I'm going to be using the white and the pink on both sides, but I just kind of alternated it. On one side, I put the pink on bottom and the white on top. And on the other side, I ju did just the opposite. Now I did use a little bit of wire to wire this to my frame so that it wouldn't come out, but it really only took one piece. Once I had those wired down, then I started going in and I would like pull off one of the white roses and stick a pink rose in its place. And then I'd go and pull off a pink one and stick a white one in its place. All I was doing here was just kind of mixing them up so they weren't quite so color blocked. They looked more like they were interwoven with each other. Now let's make a bow for our piece. I'm going to use my little bow maker that I made and I'll put a link to this down below if you'd like to be able to make one for yourself. And I'm going to use my ribbon and make a six inch tail on each side. Then I'm going to do three loops on each side, making sure I twist it in the middle so that the printed part is always out. And then I'll pull it off and I'll wrap a chenille stem right around that center there and fluff it up. All good bows need a lot of fluffing and I think this one turned out so pretty. Now I'm going to take some of my twine and wrap it around the middle and this is going to cover my chenille stem but it's also going to tie it back to the twine that's on my wreath. Now we'll fluff it up a little more then I'm going to take it and I'm going to shove those chenille stems right down between my twine and into the wire and pull it through to the back. Then I can just twist it on and this is going to hold my bow onto my wreath. I'll twist it about three or four times and then trim it off. We'll fluff it up, dovetail our ends, and with that, this project is finished. We love using our water slide decal paper for so many projects. It is so versatile and it gives you endless possibilities for projects. We are going to be sharing a pack of our paper from our stash with one of our sweet friends. All you have to do is watch our video and Bree's video, comment on both, and it could be you. it's Trish. For this project we are going to go trash to treasure. I went into my trash can and I pulled out this old tin can. I cleaned it up and I cut the bottom out of it. You want to make sure you have a can that you can open up on both ends. A wine cork. I got mine from the thrift store but you can get them from any craft store. Some hippo water slide decal paper and we have a surprise for you guys. We are going to be sharing a pack of our paper from our stash with one of our sweet friends. Make sure you stick around to find out how. You're also going to need a print for your water slide decal paper. I get these from Creative Fabrica, from Etsy, from all kinds of places, but you can also get free prints just by Googling free prints or going to Pinterest and looking for free prints. When we print these, we print it with our inkjet printer, so we need to seal them. I'm going to be using this clear acrylic matte coating. It's by Treehouse, and I got it from Hobby Lobby, but you can use any kind of clear acrylic coating. You, Mod Podge even sells one if you have one of those on hand. Some Waverly chalk paint in plaster. Some leftover florals from another project. I'm going to use these pink roses and ivy from Hobby Lobby and some baby's breath from the Dollar Tree. Some pearl beads. I got mine from the Dollar Tree. Some flexible wire. I got this out of my husband's shed, but you could use craft wire if you don't have any other kind of wire. 
something to punch with. I'm going to be using my Crocodile Punch from We Are Memory Keepers. I got mine from Joann's when it was on sale and I use a coupon so I got a really good deal on it. But if you don't have one of these, you could just use an awl. I got my awl from Hobby Lobby. They have them on sale every other week for 50% off, making them about $2.50. And y'all, this thing's amazing. It will punch through almost anything. I use it for my paper projects but you'll also see me use it on a lot of craft projects and my glue gun and some glue sticks so the first thing we're going to do is work on our can you want to make sure that your seam is in the back and you're going to be punching a hole on each side of your can now i went ahead and punched mine and you see that this crop of dial it just goes through it like butter but i did find out that i should have waited until i crushed it because once i did the holes didn't line up anymore. Now we are just going to crush that bottom and this was pretty soft with it not having a bottom in it. I was able to pretty much press it together with my hands. I couldn't get it quite all the way together though. So after I softened that top a little bit and pushed it in some, I end up just kind of grabbing my hammer and I'm going to tap around on the bottom of this and it's going to completely close this up. Just make sure that you don't get your fingers in this when you're doing it. Now I closed it with the hammer, but then I start playing with it and pressing it some and it opened back up. So I had to use it and close it back up. But once I did that, y'all, it looked like that it was actually sealed together. Now we are going to paint our can. I'm using my Waverly chalk paint in plaster and I am gonna give it a really good coat all over. Now, when I started painting this, those holes that I made that were not supposed to have been on top really showed up and my way of fixing that was to take a little bit of tape and tape it on the inside so that it kind of closes up the hole and then I use a little bit of caulk to fill in the top side of this and let it dry and then once it dried and I painted over it you really couldn't even tell that they were there. Now I'm going to finish painting my can. It took one good coat, I let that dry and then I did some touch up and that way it covered everything. Now that my paint is dry, I'm going to use a little bit of sandpaper. This is just the sandpaper from the Dollar Tree and go over this really lightly. I want to give it a distressed look and let some of my can pop back out between my paint. Now we're going to take our print that we printed out and you want to cut it down, leaving about an eighth of an inch around it. Now you don't want to get it too close, but I don't leave it too far either. Then you're going to put it in your water and let it soften up. It takes about 45 seconds and you'll feel it start moving across it and you know that it's ready. Now it's real important to wet the surface that you're going to be applying this to. So make sure you touch that with your wet fingers. Then once this starts sliding, you're going to position it, hold it with one finger and then slide out the paper with the other one. Just be real careful when you're doing this. Now we're just going to pat around on the top till we know it's in place. And then we're going to take our paper towel and just pat off all the excess moisture and leave it to completely dry. I love this. Now I'm going to take one of those wine corks and use my awl and I'm just going to push it right through the center of this. Now it doesn't go all the way through so I had to go through both sides to open it up. And then I'm going to take my wire and push it through my wine cork. I'm going to use it kind of like a handle. I figure out how long I want it to be, making sure that I leave some to twist up. And then I'm going to put some of my beads on there. I decided to just go with two on each side. I used a larger one and a smaller one. And then I used just a little dot of glue to hold them in place so they don't slide back down my wire. Once those are on there, we are going to take our wire and push it through our hole. And at this point, you can see that you could just bend this up and twist it around itself. That would be totally fine. But I like to make mine a little decorative. I take my pliers and I grab hold of the end of the wire and just kind of twist it around, forming like a little circle, and then twist it to the side and push it into my can. We'll do that one more time and I'll slow it down. You're just going to take the end of your pliers, grab the end of your wire and start twisting it. As you twist, it's going to form like a little circle and it's going to keep going around. Once you get it all the way down, you're just going to kind of turn it towards the can and push it in and you have your cute little handle. 
Now all we have to do is decorate it. I'm going to use some of this ivy that I got from Hobby Lobby. I clip off a couple pieces and stick those down in there. And then I grab my cute little pink roses that I got from Hobby Lobby. Y'all, I'm kind of obsessed with these. I bought them last year and I ended up buying them again this year just because I love them so much. You clip them off and kind of stick them in there, you know, to your liking. And you can use whatever flowers, you know, match your home decor. I am then going to take a little bit of my baby's breath, clip off a couple of little pieces of it, use some hot glue and stick them down in there. And once I do that, this project is finished. This is Kay. This is my first time ever water slide decal paper project and I'm going to be sharing it with you and I'm going to let you know about all the mistakes that I made so that you don't do that when you get your package of paper because we are going to be sharing one of these with a lucky viewer. You're going to need some kind of clear acrylic sealer. I used the Mod Podge sealer because that's what I had on hand but there are many that you could use. I'm going to be using one of these wooden circles with a 7 inch diameter that I got at Walmart and it only cost 97 cents y'all. I'm also going to be using some white Waverly chalk paint. The first thing you need to do is decide on a design that you're going to print on your printer. I went out on the internet and I looked for free SVG spring files. This is the one I chose and then I just brought it down to my computer and I printed it out. I let my paper sit until it completely dried and then I came in with my spray adhesive and you're going to do this three times. You're going to spray it, let it dry for at least 10 minutes, spray it again, let it dry for 10 minutes, do the same thing on the third time, spray it really nicely and let it dry for 10 minutes. And while that is drying, I'm going to go in and I'm going to paint my wooden circle with my white Waverly chalk paint. Yes, this one is painted blue first, but that's another story, y'all. But I'm just going to give it two good coats of my white Waverly chalk paint. Now that our design is completely dry, I'm going to go in and cut around the edges. You want to leave an eighth of an inch of your paper all the way around. I cut mine honestly just a little bit close, so make sure you do that with your design. I can get a little too fussy here, y'all. You really don't have to be that exact because it is clear. I just wanted to show you the instruction sheet that does come with your paper. And it is wonderful, y'all. It takes you step by step through the instructions. And my suggestion is follow everything they tell you to do exactly the way they say on this paper. It's very important to wet your surface that you're going to be placing your decal on. Then you're going to soak your decal in water for 30 to 60 seconds and then it will start separating from the side. And this is where I made my big mistake because I didn't pull it over right here at this point and just slide it onto my board. I actually took mine completely off. I think I panicked y'all and then started placing it down on my circle. Don't do it that way. Do it the way Trish does it because that is the correct way. But I think I did manage to salvage my project. I got it pretty straight. And then you need to let it dry, y'all, for about three hours. I didn't have a lot of time, so I sped mine up with a blow dryer. And then to cover up my little mistake at the bottom, I just made a simple shoestring bow out of this cute grow grain ribbon. And I'm going to place it right down there at the bottom in the center. That's just personal preference because I had a little bit of a centering problem. And then I'll just use a leftover piece of ribbon that I had and tie a knot in the end. And then I'm just going to glue it on the back with some hot glue. And that's how I'm going to hang my piece. And there's our finished piece. I learned a lot in this project, y'all. But as I've always heard, practice makes perfect. Thank you so much for joining us today. Please don't forget to click on the link in the description box below and go check out Bree's video. Make sure to comment on both videos to get in the running for a pack of the water slide paper. Thank you so much for watching today. If you saw something you liked, we hope you'll give us a big thumbs up. Leave us a comment and let us know what you think and if you have any suggestions. 
We just love hearing from y'all, and it really does help our channel grow. We would love for you to tune in all week for Made It Mondays, Wild Card Wednesdays, and then finish off the week with Craft Chat on Saturday mornings. Bye, y'all!